We're going to talk about two of our favorite strategies when it comes to fishing the betas or the blue winged olive hatch. Dude, that's a big brown bro. Yeah. Today we are out on the river, perfect blue winged olive time. We've had a ton of snow this year and the water's risen. The fish are feeding at different depths than they had been the previous week. So rather than just come and hope that they eat dries, we're going to take two of our strategies when it comes to any betas water and kind of transform it for what we're doing here. So first off, notice I do not have a fly rod. I have my handy dandy seine because if you arrive before the hatch is typically going to start, one of the things that I like to do is get a sampling in the water of where the bugs are holding or where they're floating, where the fish are going to hold. As you come earlier in the day, the little betas, the blue doll of nymphs are going to live in the detritus on the bottom of the rocks and the crud and they'll end up working their way up to the surface and that's where you're going to get the hatch. I'm going to take my seine here and <clears throat> I'm going to stick it down in, I'm about two feet of water, I'm holding it close to the bottom and then I'm going to bring it up in case there are any adults which they're starting to be adults and I can see a couple things. First off, I see some adults, and I see some almost adults. So these are nymphs that are kind of making their way to the surface. We've got a lot of midges, some uh, immature betas. So that means the ones like this guy that just probably was gonna hatch. Lots of different bugs. You see the adult at the top there. He was just in the float, in the drift. And then you'll also see a number of shucks and just a lot of biomass. And this is again in the top one foot, maybe 18 inches of the water column, not on the bottom bottom. I don't see any fish rising right now, but I can almost be guaranteed that if I'm seeing some adults and I'm seeing some emergers of the naturals, the fish are probably not gonna be directly on the bottom. So what I'll start with is I'm gonna start with a little indicator and then a nymph about two to three feet behind that. So that's gonna be the way I'll approach this earlier in the day. So we'll try that first. If we get some dry fly action, we'll switch over to that in a little bit. <laughs> they are eating. Oh. Yeah, he was feeding right under the surface. And now I'm gonna let him go right here. Hands off, release. <laughs> Indicator with small nymph, a little tiny two and a half millimeter bead just to get down a little bit. You want as small an indicator as possible but I need it to be able to support the weight of the nymph if I need to go a little deeper. That guy, I could see a couple others finning, so they were eating those emergers. But again, right as these bugs start to come off the bottom, the fish are mid-column. They're not gonna feeding right on the bottom, and they're not all feeding right on top, although we are starting to see some rise on top. So I'll probably switch over to a dry in a few minutes. We'll uh, keep going. So he started to transition to eat adults for sure. Now I can see a bunch of adults on the surface. It may be time to switch. Okay, so strategy number one, like I said, is earlier in the day, start a little lower in the water column, but not on the bottom. You tend to want to bring that fly up closer to the surface until you start seeing some risers. So you'll know they're risers, at least if you get down close to the water, you can see all these little sailboats. So the betas may fly, has upright wings. These are about a size 18 or so. They're just gonna hatch out of the water and climb out of their shuck, let their wings dry off, and then they're gonna fly away and do their thing, or they're gonna get eaten by a trout. That brings up strategy number two, and that is even during the hatch, be aware of where the fish are feeding. So right now, if I go and I'm tossing a dry fly, and then I see the fish kind of turn off, I'm gonna go back to either that same nymph with one fly or two flies 
but not on the bottom, kind of indicator dropper, or you could do a dry dropper. I've got a little comparadon. <clears throat> I need it to float a little bit higher in this uh, riffly water. Don't just sit there and flog the water with a dry fly if you don't see a ton of fish rising. So those are the two strategies. Number one, start down lower earlier in the day, but not on the bottom. And then strategy number two is always adjust with respect to where the bugs are. And even now, we're seeing some cripples on the surface. A lot of patterns that imitate cripples are gonna be good. Obviously, your dry flies. We'll have links below for any of the dry fly and nymph patterns that we're using, as well as our Betis Blueing Olive Fly Selection Primer that's also listed below. Mm -hmm.